Catherine. Catherine Fiore, EU reporter. Uh, you mentioned this very complex matrix of organisation, the Astana talks, the UN, the, the eight regional areas. How, is, uh, how do you think that's going to be brought together? And you mentioned that a proxy war is being re uh, replaced by a proxy peace. And now, that suggests, I mean, the particular role that Russia has played in uh, this conflict. And I'm just wondering, uh, are they willing to play a role in this proxy peace? Thank you. Well, first of all, uh, I wish this was already turned into a proxy peace. We're not there yet, and I want to make this very clear. We're starting to look at the future. We're starting to look at post-conflict, but we're still in a conflict, and every single day we have people dying on the ground. Uh, but you cannot build peace if you don't believe at, le at least a little bit that this is possible, and this is why we've started this work. Uh, and yes, I believe uh, there can be a space for all international players, and especially all regional actors that live with borders and uh, dynamics that are interlinked with the situation in Syria, uh, so that they can see that it's far more convenient in this moment to turn this into a proxy peace uh, and allow Syria to restart somehow uh, with a political transition that will be needed. Um, when it comes to the complicated uh, setup of different meetings, uh, uh, it's probably because it's a complicated conflict. And so you have different layers uh, that are needed. On one side, you have the military uh, talks that are necessary, uh, and that is happening mainly in Astana. Uh, as you know, the European Union is not a military player uh, on this uh, conflict. I'm proud, and I always underline the fact that Europeans are proud not to be a military actor. In this, uh, in this scene. Um, and uh, uh, we have seen that uh, the work in Astana, uh, led by Russia, and Turkey, and to a different extent, uh, Iran, has led uh, to uh, at least some provisions of ceasefire um, and some mechanisms uh, on ceasefire, uh, which is something we welcome. Not only we, but also the UN Security Council has welcomed with uh, a resolution. Um, but it's clear that uh, uh, the, uh, with the capital uh, T, uh, the process is the UN-led process in Geneva. That is the place where Syrians come together. That is the place where the entire international community supports intra-Syrian talks and where the parameters of a political solution are worked out and found, hopefully found. What we're putting in place uh, as the European Union is a supporting um, work for the UN because we recognize the value of multilateralism embodied in the UN at a maximum level, and also because any outcome will have to go through the Security Council again, uh, for sure. Uh, so the spirit with which we're working, being it uh, on humanitarian or political or diplomatic tracks, is in support uh, to the UN. And the work we have done, as I said, with the eight regional actors we have convened, and we are continuing to meet constantly, bilaterally, in Brussels, uh, has always been provided to the UN as a content that provides the basis for their elaborations on uh, governance, on transition, on reconciliation, on different other elements. So we are at the service of a process that we recognize is led by the UN in Geneva, also because it's the Syrians that have to decide on the future of their country. But again, our work can support, and the Brussels conference will gather also, hopefully, political support to give a push and encourage the Syrians and the Syrian parties convening in Geneva to take the necessary decisions for them to um, live together, feeling home in their own country. Uh, thank you very much. Enrique Serveto from the Spanish newspaper ABC. Hi, Representative. How, how do you uh, expect to overlap the, uh, the political problems that can uh, reach the fact that uh, Turkey uh, is uh, at the same time a key player in this uh, conflict and also is rising uh, difficulties uh, with uh, political difficulties with the European Union, not only uh, in this case with uh, the latest development in, in uh, Holland, but uh, also the, their relationship with, with us are becoming more and more difficult, and they are uh, clearly opting for more, uh, being more close to 
uh, to Russia. And also, you didn't mention uh, uh, United States. You uh, what's the role of uh, Washington in, the, in this plan? I'll be uh, in Washington again for my second visit in uh, the last month, uh, on Sunday, from Sunday onwards, uh, exactly for uh, obviously a bilateral visit, but also because we will have there the anti-Daesh coalition meeting at ministerial level, uh, where uh, I would expect that the new U.S. administration will also present its anti-Daesh strategy that will probably cover also part of the Syria strategy. Uh, you should not ask me, but them uh, what uh, uh, is going to be uh, their, um, their Syria strategy. I'm presenting here the EU <laughs> Syria strategy. But what I can say is that from the first elements uh, I have, uh, um, uh, I have uh, received from my interlocutors in Washington uh, during these uh, first weeks of intense contacts with them, being them Secretary of State Tillerson, Secretary of Defense Mattis, but also the Vice President uh, uh, Pence, and uh, many contacts at different levels in the White House and in, uh, uh, in Congress, uh, I see a certain uh, um, engagement uh, still on the Syria uh, file, uh, but also the recognition uh, of the fact that other players uh, have a fundamental role to play, including or starting from the European Union. So it is not for me to comment or present uh, positions uh, that are um, going to be in case eventually presented by the U.S. administration. What I can say is that in our first exchanges, um, our talks on Syria have been uh, productive, and uh, um, I've presented, obviously, to my uh, U.S. interlocutors uh, the main features of the work we are not only doing, but also planning to do on Syria, and they have been extremely well uh, perceived and received. Uh, so I see a uh, good, uh, um, good space for cooperation there. Um, but again, uh, it's not for me to comment or to present elements of, of a strategy that uh, is not a European one, it's an American one. Um, on Turkey, uh, on Turkey itself, uh, you might have seen I have uh, released a statement yesterday uh, with Commissioner Han, and uh, I would not elaborate further on that. So I have nothing more to comment uh, beyond what we have said yesterday. What I can say is that uh, uh, our work with Turkey on this file, for instance, on Syria, but also on other files, uh, has been in these weeks and months uh, constructive, very constructive. I've been in contact with the Foreign Minister Chavusoglu uh, very, very often uh, in the last uh, four, three, four months, uh, in particular being Turkey, uh, one of the key interlocutors we had to create connections between our regional work, our EU regional work on Syria and the Astana uh, meetings. Uh, and uh, uh, I think we still share an interest uh, to bring peace uh, in Syria uh, and to bring this war to an end. Um, so um, our work uh, on the Syria file uh, with Turkey in these months has been uh, not only constructive but also very intense. Okay, David. Thank you, Margaritis. Una domanda in italiano. If I can just put a couple of questions. One on Syria. A couple of times you've said that it's not a military solution to the conflict and this is not a military involvement by the EU, but uh, what about a military solution coming out of the Astana talks suggested by Russia? Is that possible? Secondly, on Turkey, the European Parliament and the, the chairman of two main groups this morning talked about the suspension of the accession talks given what has been happening just lately. This is in an EU resolution, so what is your view about that? Well, on that point, I have no intention to comment. I did with Commissioner Han issue a lengthy statement not just about the existing tension between Turkey and the government of certain EU member states, but particularly with regard to a major report from the Venice Committee on the substance for constitutional change. So we discussed this yesterday and I have nothing to add on that. On the military solution for Syria, I think that 
precisely what's happened over the last few months does show that there isn't a military solution to the conflict in Syria. Certainly there will be a need to have a military strategy in fighting Daesh, but if there were just a military solution to the conflict, then military contacts as in Astana would have been enough to terminate that armed conflict, and that hasn't happened over the last few months. Uh, obviously, monitoring the ceasefire is extremely important just to calm the situation on the ground. And that is an element of progress, but not enough to create the political condition for an end to the conflict to peace and involvement of everyone in a country of unity rather than just a military conflict. This means that also the people sponsoring the idea of meeting in Astana and having brought in a mecha mechanism for ceasefire, even if an imperfect and piecemeal one. This does recognize that there is simply politically political advancement involving Syrian actors, and this is our view of this, and that's why we're supporting the UN's movements and our di diplomatic efforts that are meant to flank or support that. I think that's the sequence, that the coordination, in fact, between Astana on the military side, our meetings at regional level, regional initiative with the actors there, and our humanitarian action and our starting planning for reconstruction and the post-conflict post -conflict situation with political transition can help bring the Syrian partners together under UN Aegis in Geneva. Info, Paris, and Radio Nord Bretagne. When we talk when talking to the Syrians who've been here for a long time before the conflict broke out and with refugees, what they say is that they can't tell what the opposition politicians are standing for. They don't feel as though they're correctly represented. Now, why is that? Well, as you know, I, I meet the Syrians a lot. I, I'd be tempted to ask you or to anyone in the room whether you feel fully represented by any party. There is societal diversity, and clearly that has a political ethnic and religious aspe aspect to it. That's very complicated. One Syrian isn't another. There was diversity before the conf conflict, and this has been exacerbated thereby. So from the EU's point of view, we're supporting the work of the opposition in several forms among various organizations and political parties because they can have a well-prepared and unified view during the talks in Geneva, but also civil society bodies, whether religious or female, representing the diversity of Syria, and I think that's a great wealth. The risk is that the future of Syria, if the political transition doesn't get underway as it should, will not represent that wealth and richness of 
Syrian society and that's why the EU and the international community are insistent on the fact that the future can only be inclusive there's a need to protect minorities and I think for Syria it goes well beyond that it has to make sure that all Syrians have a place as citizens in a country which is very diverse and complex in terms of social identity and we've seen in the region that when this protection of diversity is ignored properly then thereafter big problems arise and it, only the Syrians therefore will know how to form an inclusive future for the future and we can flank that process. Uh, anything on a, a su subject not covered preferably. Br Bruxelles 2, my qu question is a bit different. I'm wondering whether in that paper you have any security aspects, particularly uh, the, the idea of a force support mission in Iraq. Well, this is targeted towards uh, Syria with a more regional strategy approved, I think, two years or so ago. This still applies and affects Syria, Iraq and the rest of the region in general. And this is something the Commission isn't deciding, but the Council will. It's not to avoid giving an answer, but to target the fact that we're talking about humanitarian and political support to the process in Syria to end the conflict in Syria. But there is work being done on Iraq and the rest of the region, mainly work on anti-Daesh. As I've said, I'll be in Washington next week for the anti-Daesh coalition as the EU is part of it on the non-military aspects and particularly on the demining uh, de aspects and work with the people who were freed by Daesh and that's work we're pressing on with including support for the Iraqi security forces and the strengthening of local action. This work is continuing and along with the member states to see how we can do more or better and that will be pressing ahead but that's not the precise point of the Syria targeted strategy. Finally, on the situation of the Kurds in Syria, because militarily people express support to the Kurds. What is EU policy vis a vis Kurds in Syria? Well, I did say that it wasn't covered. <laughs> I said that Syria has a population which is extremely diverse, and EU policy is to make sure that everyone, all Syrian citizens, have a place not as a protected minority but as a protagonist for the country's future, which I think answers your point. This applies to people of all backgrounds, the different communities and identities making up Syria. That's something that has to be kept and all elements of the Syrian population have to 
have a place not just in civic society but in the constitutional and political makeup of Syria but it's not for the European Union to tell Syria what its governance should be like in the future we can flank that and support that but it will be all Syrians themselves deciding what form of political transition will come about when the conflict is over, hoping, hoping that we ever will. That's what we're working on. Thank you very much. That's the end of the press conference. We have a document here on your way out.